Hey, welcome back, big boy. Here we go. Oh, wow, well, all the kitty cats have just come down. Are you guys interested in checking this out? Or you just want to go outside? Uh, let's do this. Well, what you can do is open the door for him, right? I've got the Coral Sea uh, battle set up, <clears throat> which will involve some maneuver and things like that. However, the dude that I want to play with, uh, Richard, has now said that he wants to do the Guadalcanal campaign. Hmm. Now, I'm thinking... I'm wondering... Yeah. I'm wondering if we could then use this to roll forward in time. Guadalcanal campaign's only supposed to take six hours to play. That's a joke. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so in order to do that, I'm going to have to redo forces, find the ships, and check the map, and put all the airfields and things down for the map. And this has got a fairly big setup, plus it deals with reinforcements. But that's going to be on his side, so there shouldn't be too much drama. Oh no, I've got reinforcements too. Uh, all right, well, we're going to have to have a look at that. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, I wanted to show you the game set up. So you have got your... Well, I'm really sorry about the light today. It just I've had to move quite a few things around and I haven't adjusted my lights yet. Uh, so, Japanese forces all set up and organized into task force groups that seem to make relative sense. Uh, with your aircraft, and you'll notice I haven't clipped these really. I started doing some clipping on these, and I was uh, disappointed with the results because of the the softness or the age of the cardboard. So I, I'm being really careful about which units I clip, uh, and they fit nicely into here anyway. And you can't really notice the clipping. So, and also that you can see the offsets really tight sometimes on these. Uh, sorry if you can if you can see those. I'm just waving my hands around. You see how close they are to the edge there? In fact, I would probably say that that count as offset, right? Anyway, so, we're not clipping. Got our display track ready. <coughs> I've got to put all the little status markers on there because there's a buttload of status markers. And then we have uh, the operations display. That's where we keep track of the initiative and naval movement and time. I think time goes on there. Yes, there's the time track over there. Months and days. The time track on this game is just brilliant. It's so smart, so clever. And here we are set up with the Coral Sea engagement. I've got the other map set up because I think what's going to happen here is we'll play a couple of turns and then we'll end up uh, we'll end up rolling straight to the big campaign. That's usually what happens with Richard. Uh, even if we start the camp, the, the Guadalcanal campaign. Now, I was just wondering whether the Guadalcanal campaign would be a good place to kind of kick off the overall campaign and uh, kind of go from there because it, we get past all, you know, what the Japanese basically do in the steamroller thing and then we start where where the game gets into, where the war gets interesting for both sides, perhaps. That might be something to consider. Okay, uh, so there's the forces all set up. So you can see you've got the, uh, <coughs> the various ports uh, organized. And there's that focus for you. Uh, all laid out here. We've got no units on the board yet. The Japanese basically control this entire area. And of course, up north as well, we would have to do quite a bit of setup if we were going to swag the uh, swag this into the main campaign interesting guess I'm just thinking out loud with you but anyway it's a chance for you to see the map and see what it looks like kind of partially set up so you have this all laid out you've got this chart here which is the operations chart you got to have your air mission procedure schematic diagram because you know you never know you're going to mess something up and then this deals with uh, this is how you just kind of keep track of movement points and gen generic things here. Uh, stuff like that. 
resource points, fleet point, merchant fleet points. Uh, it's got some handy dandy uh, charts to help you work out what's going on. Here's your phases the, of each turn <coughs> and the battle cycle, etc., to go through for each turn. A lot of uh, a lot of other little bits for the actual operational side of the game, and then this is your initiative track here. You can see month by month. This is showing you the level of uh, uh, intelligence that will then be applied to initiative, which will help influence initiative. And so the the intelligence of the of the American forces goes up and up and up. Is that them? Sorry, that might be us. This is the Japanese track, so that's the Japanese. Sorry about that. Ignore that. Yes, this is the level of intelligence, and you can see it's degraded over time for the Japanese. Anyway, <coughs> here's the American one. Oh, here's that. That's just a screen that we use for all combat tables. And search results there. That's a great search result table. It's very cleverly done. It's very articulate and interesting, and uh, makes life easy to work out exactly what can see what, you know, whether you're searching by air, searching for naval, and then it gives you the ranges right here, and you roll the dice, and then you cross-reference that to the number of hexes out, and whether it's day or night, uh, one, two, three, or four air units, or a spotter, oh, you can't see poop. There. So you've got the uh, unit types, day or night, range, and then you cross-reference this into here. Really simple table, really well done and well thought out. You know, the only downside, which I've already mentioned in previous emails, is uh, emails, <laughs> videos, is that you know you, you literally need as the enemy, you you may want to roll for every single hex that your enemy moves into to see if you can spot them, uh, which could get very tedious very quickly. And I think I think we're going to come up with some mechanism between the two of us to agree that you know if it's a, if it's a if it's a one. A uh, ten percent chance of finding you. Um, I don't know. We'll work something out. But I, I don't. I don't want to have to sit here and, and roll the dice every single hex that could. Well, maybe it won't be bad. Maybe there'll only be three task forces on the map, so that won't be a big deal. But we'll see. Okay. That's just a quick look at all this stuff. Yeah. Here's the uh, here here. This is what's interesting. Here's the uh, allied display sheet right and you can see their uh, level they get to level four on their uh, strategic intelligence right so they start out with four because they've uh, oh, sorry three then they get the code they break the codes so look they're you know massively uh, on top of things then they they lose the codes did you can you see did you see all that I hope so then they break the codes again and then it stays constant all the way through in fact it gets better and better and better they stay at level four the entire rest of the war, which just gives them such deep insight into what's going on and, uh, and allows them to move first in many instances or, or ursip movement in, and not, you know, not ursip, but interrupt what's going on for the Japanese. And uh, that will be impactful. I'll be playing the Japanese and he, he will be playing the Allies. All right, we will uh, leave you to it and talk to you guys soon once we once we get this uh, off and running.